represent a cultured, sophisticated man about town. Hit it! If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? <laughs> Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes, or cutaway coat, perfect fits. <laughs> Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying mighty hard to look like Gary Cooper. Where Rockefellers walk with sticks or umbrellas in their midst. It's a wonderful piece of lunacy. It must have been great fun making that oh, it movie. Was. It? it was the most fun I had on any movie I I'll was bet. in. <laughs> And Peter Boyle, who oh, yes. died recently, yeah. he was just sensational in this part. <laughs> when you look back at that, was it with a sense of nostalgia, of sadness, of what? That period in your life when you were oh, making no, I... Richard Pryor and, and, mm -hmm. and with Mel. And, and, and Gilda, and after Gilda and died, Gilda. I thought, I'll, I'll never get married again. I wasn't too old to get married, but I said, that it won't happen. And then I was writing See no evil, hear no evil. Yeah, that's your memoir, yes. With, no, no, that was oh, with sorry, Richard no, Pryor. Yeah. And uh, I had to meet this lady at the New York League for the Hard of Hearing because I had to study about the hearing impaired and the blind. So I went to uh, see this lady, and they told me her name was Ms. Webb. I said, oh, my God, my luck. <laughs> Some New England old biddy is going to say, you're making fun of the blind and the deaf. I said, and I walk in there, and out comes this vision in a lavender dress, a little pink, a little splashes of blue. And she was working at the New York League for the Hard of Hearing, and she put me through all kinds of different tests and sent me to lip-reading classes and everything. And she said, uh, if I ever get the money for a grant, would you help me? I want to put um, videos out mm. so people who can't afford to come to New York can go to a library. I said, sure, okay. And then uh, about three or four months later, she called, remember me? I said, of course. I've got the money for the grant. Would you help me? And she s sent me the script. And I said, as Zero said to me, I told her, this script is going to close on page four because <laughs> there's no humor in it. You've got, you can't just have statistics. So we met in a little Italian restaurant, 11 tables. <laughs> Detail. She put uh, her tape recorder in the center between us at this little table, and she had a brilliant idea of giving me problems of someone who wants to read lips, but the person he's trying to read is chewing gum, <laughs> or has a mustache covering his upper lip, or standing in shadows, and you can't... And, and I would improvise into the tape recorder, and she would write it up or type it up at home. So we met again the following week. More problems, more improvisation. She typed it up. So the third week, I said, leave the tape recorder at home. <laughs> and that was our first date. And now we're married 15 years. It'll be 16 years in September. And I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. Oh, lovely. Nice <laughs> And, and your fitness, because you had a cancer scare, didn't you? I uh, did. I had, so. a, I had an ache right here, and I said, oh, my God, I've got a kidney stone. And I went to the doctor, and they sent me ultrasound and tissue samples, and uh, they said, no, you have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. And uh, a hematological oncologist in Connecticut said, I'm going to give you nine sessions of chemotherapy, and then I'll give you something, if it all works, I'm gonna give you something called Rituxan, and then you're all done. And after two sessions, my spleen shrunk down to normal. After four sessions, the 
tumor was gone, and I called my doctor friend in Los Angeles and I, I, just to tell him the good news. And he said, I'm very happy for you, Gene, but I'm not content until you see Carol Portlock at Sloan Kettering Memorial Cancer Hospital. And I went to see her, and she said, you're very healthy, Mr. Wilder, and uh, you're very chemo-responsive, but it's going to come back. My wife's jaw dropped mine. I said, uh, when? She said, six months. I said, well, can't we wait six months to find out if you're right? <laughs> and she said, you can, but once it comes back, it's much more difficult to get rid of again. I said, so what do I do? And she said, stem cell transplant. And uh, that, that's not um, embryonic stem cell. No, it's no. autogalous. So you take it from your own blood. Yeah, yeah. They gave me a lot of chemo and took out all those little stem cells after giving me chemo uh, that weren't red or white yet. They didn't know they're so young. And then they froze them in a bag about this big. And then after the radiation and the chemo, they came in, thawed out the stem cells, sang happy birthday to me. <laughs> and, I, and I said, what? Said, this is the beginning of your new life. And is it a remission or? After five years, I went into what is called complete remission. And I was going on a book tour two years ago here in London. And I said, um, what do I tell people if they say, how are you, Gene? And he said, say you're in complete remission. I said, well, can I say I'm cured? He said, well, cured is a, uh, an insurance term, actuary tables and all that. Just say, if you outlive your doctor, you're cured. <laughs> So I thought the best way to achieve that would be to get a gun and shoot my doctor. <laughs> but I love him and we're good friends now. And now it's seven and a half years. Oh, great. So I, I'm very healthy now. Well, thank you for coming on the show. The, uh, the book I hear might be, it, the, the film rights have been bought, in fact. So you've gone right back to where you started. The, yes. the, the original screenplay is now going to become a movie. I had to rewrite the, a screenplay, though. Yes, I, of course, that's, that's true. There's a novella called My French Horror. Gene Wilder, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very Gene Wilder. My thanks to Gene Wilder, to Ian Hisdop, to Patrick Stewart, and to Joe Cocker. Until next week, from all of us here, a very good night. Good night.